Hey, welcome back for another Rust console tips and tricks video. I'm Bayboy, and in this video, I'm going to show you lots of useful tips and tricks for new console players starting out in Rust. So let's get straight to it, no messing around. As you can see there, you pretty much need eyes in the back of your head anytime you're harvesting or chopping trees. Uh, I don't even watch for the X too much. I just uh, try to look around as much as possible to see who's trying to attack me or to steal my wood. Okay, the attack heli. The attack heli can be brutal. He will get you for sure. Every couple of hours, the attack heli will be out. It's uh, similar to the uh, transport helicopter that drops the uh, lock crates or the Chinook crate. So uh, you're going to have to watch out when the attack heli is out, when you leave your base. Uh, sometimes it may be better off just staying inside until he moves away. Uh, but the only way to avoid the attack heli so he don't engage and shoot you is to wear less than uh, three pieces of clothing. So any more than two pieces of clothing on your person, on your character, and the attack heli will engage and destroy you. Uh, other than that, you need to uh, have no weapons uh, range weapons in your hot bar so you you'll be okay with a bow but if you have any other uh, uh, range weapons uh, in your hot bar the attack heli is going to engage you and luckily kill you so you need to take cover or get inside of a building and uh, the only other way is to take your weapons out of your hot bar put them up into your inventory and to remove your clothing and only wear two pieces of clothing and that only works if the attack heli does not see you first. So if the attack heli already sees you, then it's too late to remove the clothing or your weapons. You basically just got to hide or try to take cover. And once he spots you, it's on. So right here in this cliff, I was just trying to be a little friendly with that guy. I was just trying to farm and uh, get some components. And uh, I didn't see the need of fighting right now. I was just trying to uh, level up basically and get some more resources. And when I turned around, this, this guy had a fire arrow pointed at me, so uh, he wanted to fight, so uh, I had no choice but to engage this guy. He jumped inside of his base pretty quick when I tagged him with the DB, so I, uh, there was not much I could do with him at this point. I did shoot an arrow in his door, sometimes that will work, and uh, he'll try to pull that arrow out of the door, and by doing that, he'll mistakenly open his door, because it's the same button to uh, pull that arrow. So it's a little inside trick there for you guys. Sometimes it will work. You'll open the door and you'll be able to kill him. I immediately took notice of this guy's uh, base. His floor was wood. And he, uh, he had, obviously was upgrading. He had stone on one side. He started to upgrade his walls to stone. So a big mistake on this guy's part. Always upgrade your floor of your base first. Your foundation is the support of your base. Your foundation has to be the strongest part of your base or that's where they're going to raid from. I could have DB'd his floor there with some more shells. It would have took quite a few, but I could have shot it out and made his base crumble. So here's a quick example of a base you just spotted when I was roaming here. Uh, the base got a wall reverse. It's pretty easy to see when it's compared to the rest of the walls. There, it's bright uh, white color pretty much, and the rest of it got the cobblestone look to it. So it is uh, repairable. This guy can uh, fix this when you do recognize it. It do happen. You can place them and not, uh, not realize it right away. But when you do see it, you can fix it. You can't flip it uh, currently the way it is. After 10 minutes after it's placed, you can't flip the wall. But now you can upgrade that wall. So what you'll need to do, you'll need to upgrade that stone wall to sheet metal. And after you upgrade it, you'll have five minutes to flip that wall back to the right side. So you'll put that, that hard side out and soft side in. So you'll want that cobblestone look as the same as the rest. So flip your wall, just upgrade it and then flip it. For harvesting your resources, of course, if you can get a chainsaw and a jackie, that's going to be a lot faster if you can get a jackhammer and a chainsaw. And you can pick those up at Outpost for 150 scrap a piece. Uh, the jackie can't be researched, so you'll have to be careful with that one so you don't lose it. You can repair it on your repair bench. Uh, the chainsaw, you can research the chainsaw and uh, craft those if you do want to do that. So uh, that option is there, but obviously you're going to harvest your uh, nodes with that jackie so much faster as you see me doing there. And as well as the trees, you'll get your wood so much quicker as well. So it's a real good option if you have a scrap to spare, run down to the outpost and pick up your uh, jackhammer and your chainsaw from the vending machines. And you can see it marked when you uh, hover over the vending machines at outpost. It'll tell you exactly which one to purchase those uh, items from. 
wear clothing. I never go out naked. I always got protection on, especially head gear, so you can protect your head. It's a, a two times head shot multiplier if you get struck in the head, so you're pretty much a one shot kill as a naked. So you wanna you wanna be wearing some clothing, not to be running around naked, even when you're harvesting, so you can get on with your wood. You may take an arrow, but you may still get back in your base, right? So wear some clothing, and uh, I usually take an Ayoka pistol or take a DB with you, something that's not too valuable, but something you can still defend yourself with and uh, maybe kill them, right? So that's what I do. I don't go out fully kitted or stacked or anything, but I do go out with, a, say, a mid-level kit or a, uh, an, an, enough uh, weapons that I can uh, defend myself or take on a fight to, uh, so I don't lose my resources, right? So here we're at Outpost. I got lots of Outpost tips for you guys. So as you see there, you can uh, drink for free at the outpost. If you're thirsty, you can go up to the barrel there, take a drink. There's also a barbecue right here you can cook on if you have food you need to cook. And these chairs you see here and the barrel uh, just uh, next to the chair I was sitting in, they give you additional comfort. So the chairs will give you 100% comfort. And if you have food in your belly, that will allow you to heal very quickly up to 100% health. So here in this clip, guys, I'm going to show you uh, it is very important uh, how to properly uh, use the recycler and how to properly use uh, oil refinery. So you can get pushed off these recyclers in the oil refinery. Some kid did it to me in the last wipe here uh, from the uh, oil refinery. I did wait and uh, follow him out of outpost and kill him and his friend and take all my stuff back plus theirs because they deserve that. But uh, what he did is pretty pretty dirty. But you can do it. Um, what they're going to do is they'll jump on your head while you're inside of the recycler or inside of the refinery watching your uh, uh, resources cook or recycle. And uh, they'll jump on your head and they'll keep nudging you off that recycler. And it will work. They'll push you away and they'll have access to the recycler and all your items and they'll take them. So you got to be real careful when you recycle at outpost. You see where I'm sitting at the recycler. I get right in the corner at the back with my back to the wall so I can see who's coming and going. And with my back to the wall there, they can't push me away and off that recycler. Okay? So you see here, I'm going to go into the oil refinery right now. And I'm going to show you the same thing here. This is where they got me last time. I got them back, but uh, I couldn't figure out how to get around this one very easily. So I think the best method here may be to, uh, to probably stay out of the refinery, get, get your oil inside, get it cooking, and then uh, get out of the refinery and just stay on the lookout maybe it will be the best option, I think, because uh, I couldn't get in a position here anywhere where he could not push me away that I could see. So he jumped on my head here when I was inside the refinery, and he pushed me off of it, and he took all the oil. So it can be done. Uh, what you need to do is just stay out of the refinery, watch for people coming, go back into the refinery, hold your square down, and immediately take all your items at once back to yourself, back into your inventory. That's what I would do anyway. That would be my advice on that one. Just previously there by the recycler, there's a repair bench. And it was a good idea for you guys to use that or use your own repair bench if you have one at your home. But uh, it's a lot cheaper in, instead of throwing away your damaged uh, pickaxes or hatchets or whatnot is to use that repair bench instead of crafting new. You can just repair your old ones. Okay, guys, it's a method that I do every time I log back into my base after being offline. I get back in and I pick up my hammer and I check all the walls of my base, or maybe not every single one, but some of the main ones. Check my doors as I go out through my base to see if I've been raided or if anyone's been messing with my base or trying to break in so I can see if it's been damaged in any way so I can repair those those walls or those doors right away, right? So like most deployable items, your furnaces, they'll take damage if you pick them up and move them and replace them down again. So uh, you can see here mine was damaged, so we can repair that furnace. And I'm going to show you now how to do that. And that applies to every other item it's the same way. If it's a garage door or if it's a wall of your base, you need to have all those items in your inventory. Whatever it takes to craft that item, check the recipe in your crafting menu. And then you need to add those items in your inventory. So now for, for the furnace, we're going to go get that low grade fuel, the wood and the stone. And then we'll take the hammer in our hand and we'll strike that furnace with the hammer. And that will repair, each strike will repair the furnace. And it will say on the screen 
how much resources we're using with each strike that we make onto that furnace. This is the last tip, guys, for before we clue it up. The garage doors, they're the best doors pretty much you can get in early game uh, before you get armor, uh, armor doors in later game. The garage doors is what you're going to be uh, seeking to find. So uh, when you get those garage doors, make sure you take off your double doors and get those garage doors put on. They're much, much stronger, and that's what you want to be using. If people... Uh, Raiders come and see garage doors, they're likely going to pass on by and move on to the next base because it's just really strong and they're going to need a lot of boom to get in. So get those garage doors and get them on. Okay guys, I hope this video was helpful to you starting out in Rust. If this guide was helpful to you, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really helps me out. And until next time guys, take it easy. We'll see you in the next video.